Now uh, you're very welcome back. So with further thoughts on Manchester City's Champions League win, very happy to say John Bruin is with us. Good evening. Good evening, Joe. How are you? Very well. So Manchester City's treble winning season, the obvious mm. point of comparison is Manchester United in 99. That's been very much the uh, thread of conversation over the last couple of weeks. Um, very, very different in so many ways if Manchester United was last-ditch heroics, Man City has been um, uh, keeping everybody firmly at arm's length, demonstration of sophistication and brilliance and probably hasn't quite captured the imagination. Did it uh, move you, John? Did it grab you? How did you feel on Saturday as you watch an English club do something which is remarkable? I mean, it's a remarkable achievement and for most of us, it just it didn't seem to have the magic in the air that it really should have had. I would share that sentiment. Yeah, the, the, the magic wasn't quite there. Now, um, why would that be? Those are the big questions. I, I, okay, let's start with the fact that City are so so dominant, and and it has been. Okay, let's not set aside Arsenal's efforts uh, in the Premier League. They had an excellent season. Um, the cup final. In all honesty, you know, City held Manchester United at arm's length. But you know, go back to the '99 treble, you could say that Manchester United did the same to Newcastle back then. So that's you know, the league. But this, but the final itself, um, yeah, a fairly cold spectacle. Um, I thought I thought Inter played very well, uh, but you know, they did everything right, <laughs> and and almost got into how to stop City it's just that they forgot how to not concede a goal and they forgot how to score and you know that was very glib but it, it, they were sort of close it wasn't as easy for City as we'd expected um, and I, I, from watching the game and talking to a few people that were there it did feel as if the emotion particularly among the City staff rather than the fans was that of relief that this treble there was a certain point maybe March, April when you suddenly thought hang on City could do the treble here because back in February it was Manchester City in a title race and we, we hadn't considered the FA Cup and Champions League it almost felt like it's a relief it's done now City have conquered the Champions League they have no more worlds to conquer um, and Guardiola his whole yeah, it's the, of course, uh, it has that manic demeanour, but um, he seemed relieved as well. And uh, this morning, um, working this morning, you get this report out of City that he will see out two more years of his contract, um, which you begin to think, well, is, so what's the plan then? Is it to create the dynasty of winning two more Champions League? What follows next? Mm. Um, and, and the thing is, um, you know, as Roy Keane, the, you know, the, the, the leader of that treble team, uh, it always said was that the thing is, once you win things, it's always on to the next thing. And um, as happy as the City fans are, and, you know, they're currently filling the Dean's Gate in waiting for, for those... Um, the, the, the open top bus um, it doesn't stop there the work doesn't stop there um, and does a treble in 2023 mean as much as in 1999 I'm not sure it does but then again I'm not a Manchester City fan so let's put it that way yeah but I do think that it, the Manchester United treble uh, felt like more of an event yeah to the neutrals than this city treble does for various reasons the money spent and not least um, you know under the uh, cloud of the 115 charges looms large and City mm. have already had to pay a fine to UEFA lest we forget the ease with which they breezed through the knockout stages you know they stick seven past Leipzig they destroy Bayern Munich. That 3-0 was not even a reflection of just how good they were. They destroy Real Madrid 4-0 and they don't play very well against Inter, but they get the job done and you sort of felt like they always would. Uh, it's, it's not like there aren't great pockets of emotion or likability here. I mean, Jack Grealish's interview where he's too emotional really to be coherent is just charming, as every Jack Grealish interview yeah, is, yeah. And, he's, and he's incredibly likeable. Um, but I, I, like the defining difference, I think, is Ferguson. 
football, bloody hell, this sense of wonder. Like in 99, the line would have been said by everybody, we will never see this again. This was a miracle. This was a miracle. Yeah. And now I think, gun to your head, will City do the treble again next year or not? I'd probably it's say... It's entirely possible, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, decent chance on all fronts, i got to say. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, I think you drive at a very good point, which is... Um, set aside the Premier League set aside the FA Cup I think the Champions League has been a very disappointing competition this season Yeah. now again let's not you know let's not, that's not City's fault but I think European um, clubs are flagging uh, there was this point where it was pretty much Real Madrid up against the English clubs as it's been for the last few years they pushed on in years and now we, we have Manchester City who dominate England who should be dominating England, then it should be dominating Europe. That's a, it's a natural run of things, um, and yeah, and, and the thing is, I, I think you make a good point about the, the drama of the event. Now, of course, today uh, I was writing a piece about um, Silvio Berlusconi, of course. Now, um, the football man, despite everything else, and uh, you know, bunga bunga, all that stuff. Uh, he was a football man, and consider the drama and the majesty, uh, certainly for people of my age, of, of that Milan club back in 88, 89, 90, 94, and then into the 2000s, you know, of like a mega club of like, you know, Milan dripped glamour, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, and they had these world stars um, and, um, you know, they, maybe Berlusconi invented this idea of the super club and, you know, obviously Pep Guardiola himself has taken a lot of the stylings from that pressing game that, that, that Sarchi brought to, to football. And yet, Manchester City are a, a, an amalgam of all those things with with money spent beyond even Silvio Berlusconi's um, dreams. And it arrives and, yeah, there is this rather cold feeling and you look to the, you know, to the, to, to the rostrum when the... Uh, well, in, in, the, in the box where you've got Gianni Infantino, you've got Seferin, you've got... And you've got the head of a government that own of a country that own this club, mm. and that is a very different thing. Now, of course, Silvio Berlusconi was a, a prime minister of the country while well, he owned Milan, so this has been done before. But it feels rather different because the the, the the influence of geopolitics and the way that the game has changed and the way that the game has become this very big tool. Uh, and let's say I think that someone was saying the other day. I think it's very true. You know. Um, Abu Dhabi, it's about soft power, but when a club like Newcastle is bought by Saudi Arabia, well, then you've got hard power because, you know, Saudi Arabia are a, are a big power. And this is the way that it's shifting. And when journalists like, you know, our friend Miguel Delaney kick against that, they're criticised and you have, you know, they haven't been hassled by Manchester City fans for not believing in their dream. And it feels to me that... City, if you're a City fan, fine, go and enjoy yourself. But you can't let other people not have doubts about that mm. and not have the questions that they raise against that. Now, Manchester United back in 99, well, you know, uh, they're owned by uh, a PLC. Um, the money originally came from, uh, you know, Martin Edwards. Uh, if you're from sort of my part of the world, the Edwards family were known as the butchers that provided, you know, dodgy school dinners for you. <laughs> it, you know, this is how it was back back then. Um, football clubs have been owned by people of dodgy reputations through history, yeah. including Silvio Berlusconi. This felt different, uh, and. But it's almost like the surgical fashion with which Guardiola did this. All credit to him. He's absolutely mastered football. But yeah, coldness. Coldness is what was shared. And I think, like, I do, I, you obviously won't have watched the footage over, uh, or maybe not, the footage over here on, on BT, you know, outgoing broadcasters. And it was like a celebration of something that I'm not sure the audience was celebrating with them. No, I, I do want to talk to you about BT. Um, I've never felt so out of kilter watching anything in my life, actually. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. Uh, seen. And by the way, when you talk about that surgical um, precision, because it would be obviously completely wrong of us, and neither of us are saying that Manchester United were a universally popular entity in 99. Absolutely they not. Were, you know, we're loathed beyond all... Yes. 
loads yeah, yeah. yeah and, and much 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 more than Manchester City yeah. well in a way that's the point that there was a vibrancy yeah. there that compelled a reaction either way and so there were England fans who did stand up and, and, and chant at matches stand up if you hate United and lots of people stood up but at least there was like a, a reaction either way on the surgical precision point amazing stats on City's treble versus United's treble so goals scored not too far off actually and to be fair like that United team would be remembered as a free scoring attacking team so Absolutely. Uh, City won 4-9 United won 2-8 goals conceded City a meagre 33 to United 60 and then I suppose the defining one the win percentage across the season City 73% United 58% so, you what know, draws, just, as I recall, that, yeah. that, that, that lack that of last jeopardy. minute draws, yeah, 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 Precisely. yeah. So it just all felt very different. But on the BT Sport um, point, so uh, a fair proportion of people over here would get BT Sport if they're um, if yeah. they're paying out for it. Uh, they, they've had about a decade now, um, and they're obviously rebranding as TNT Sport. And Jay Comfrey, their lead presenter, is um, departing the scene to... Uh, he's stepping back, was how he put it, to concentrate mm. on other projects. So I have to say, I don't think, and it's just based on social media and maybe anecdotal conversations and, and, and Saturday night was a particular encapsulation I think it's probably the most maligned football coverage I can think of yeah 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 I I, I, th- I think so and uh, I often think I mean listen um, uh, you know I used to work for ESPN uh, and uh, for whom BT inherited quite a lot of coverage and I know that it's difficult to do this stuff right yeah. you work in TV yourself Joe you know this um, but I do think that there has there's been some, some real missteps I think uh, I, 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 there was an issue earlier this season um, I think actually the Milan semi-final where the pundits clearly did not know much about Milan what they knew about Milan was like you know Kaká used to play for them and Shevchenko it was of that level they've had to rethink it they've had people like Jamie Horncastle I know you know an expert you know it's a total world expert on Italian football that works but it's the cheerleading factor. Now, it's always been one of those things that's amused me. Now, back in the ITV days, you'd have things like Clive Tildesley commentating on a Wednesday night match at Old Trafford, and he'd say, you know, good news reaches us from Stamford Bridge. And I'd think, well, he's probably going to say Chelsea have scored. Well, most Manchester United fans, their, their, their version of good news would be Chelsea conceding a goal to Fiorentina wherever they were playing. There is this cheerleading thing, this idea that we all want English teams to do well in Europe. I don't think it exists, not not in, in, in any amongst English fans that I know or those that are particularly um, passionate fans. Um, and yeah, th- this there were some real missteps in it and you know you, it's difficult it's hard to criticise individuals because you understand that you know production can go wrong and it's it's all of a piece but you had this this thing with uh, Julian Lescott Julian Lescott yeah a Manchester City player one of the players that I think played in their first breakthrough so they won a title with him in defence and they won the FA Cup with him they were talking to Julian Lescott you know what, how are your nerves now Julian now Julian Lescott is from Wolverhampton was a Villa fan played more games for Wolves and Everton than he did for City. Now, obviously, he made his fortune, his fame fortune with City, but City did sell him at a certain point. And he had to sort of act as this super fan. It was really... It, it, it misfired as, as, a, as an idea. But he, it's, um, it's, and then, he embraced the role. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. he, oh, well, pretty, sure. pretty nervous, pretty nervous. And then I, even at the end... He takes time out to, you know, praise the people behind the scenes and makes a real point of praising the owner who, you yeah. know, is attending his second ever Manchester City game. Yeah. Yeah. And it, again, it just feels like these are odd choices to be making. I, I it's all look, it's it's a think, criticism generally of, of 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 pundits across the board. Like it's not like Neville and, and Carragher are hiding their allegiances, and and no, I guess no, no. there's an honesty about that, but. I, I don't know when when there is such controversy about the club to be praising the owner as if it's Jack Walker in tears you know we did it boys yeah. that that's a more complicated decision to make and it, it's a decision you need to actually think about yeah yeah I mean listen we've had this before I mean you know we had uh, when Leicester won the league you know suddenly the king of Thailand is wheeled out and uh, you know suddenly it was all brave and that is a slightly 
questionable thing because we don't know what what that might may represent. But I think in Abu Dhabi we do, and I think BT made a few mistakes because. Okay, and I know you're you're an aficionado of Jack Grealish, but he also had the Kyle Walker thing. Kyle Walker came out and gave a very honest interview about how he's from a very poor part of Sheffield. Uh, you know how his you know, his mother didn't have uh, a quid to buy him a, a nice lolly and all mm-hmm. that. And it, this was almost brushed aside by but DJ Comfrey, Ray Ferdinand's. What's the first drink you're going to go out there and get? come on now, you've got a story to tell here. You've got a human side because the thing that Manchester City require is a human side yeah. to sell to people, to, to make people think, okay, there's more to it. You know, you've got Phil Foden, a, you know, a, a City fan as a, as a boy. You've got, you know, the, every one of those players, I mean, you know, Gundogan in Turkey or, you know, a lot of stories to tell. And Gundogan ended up, Des Kelly ended up asking for an autograph from him. Yeah. I mean, Des Kelly is a, you know, I know Des Kelly is a nice guy. But Des Kelly was a, you know, pretty high ranking journalist. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Yeah. You know. Like, it, it is hard to know what they're trying to do. I mean, they're, they're certainly appealing to Man City fans and they're, they're, yeah. you know, that, that, that seems to be the, um, the editorial. But is that line. not a reaction? Is that not a reaction to some of the, uh, I would imagine uh, that uh, Manchester City fans have, kick back yeah. and they've had that criticism and that's their reaction to it I think that's a big I, part I, I think that's true I think the modern era television companies are hyper aware of what's been said on social media and so a loud Man City contingent, contingent will I think register but like it's, it's a, like the decade I think has been maligned in general Saturday was a particular example because you, you kind of feel as a as a viewer I, I'm kind of trusting this entity to yep. employ certain journalistic standards. And so to cover Man City and, and to not address in a very meaningful way this massive cloud, this massive mm. cloud, unprecedented cloud hanging over their spending and their season, to not even address that is just wrong. Like, it, it, there's no argument for that. And maybe they feel, oh, they'll, they'll spoil the mood or spoil the party. But you, you're not just there to have a party. Like, you're there to have interesting discussion and and, and to explain to a viewer who might not be reading, you know, the granular details on, on that 115 uh, charge situation uh, against them, to, to explain that to them in, in some shape or form. But the thing, like, you know, at full time, Darren Fletcher says something along the lines of, I don't know the verbatim quote, but it's along the lines of, you know, the greatest kind of story in club football has its ending. Yeah. Yeah, but that was like someone pulling up, pulling up a handbrake on the coverage. I mean, it's a lot of things. It's not the greatest story in club football. Or certainly no. or certainly, if it is, then Darren is not referring to the chapters 2008 to 2022. This is like, it, it's played as like Swindon Town here have come from League One to become champions of Europe. And then, you know, I, I, I don't know what they expected from Mario Balotelli. But like, yeah. I quite I quite enjoyed him. I I I enjoyed his glibness and and the idea of just like, why did you ask me? Yeah, but you, like, it, it, so you enjoyed it, rubber necking on an absolute car crash. But I mean, like, <laughs> but, but but even that suggests okay, he played for Inter, played for City. Let's drop him in. Even that suggests they they have no intention of having a serious conversation about no. how we are to feel about this Man City team, this project. I don't know. It, 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 it I, I think they're almost actually. If I was to boil it down to a sentence. They're giving the intelligence of the vast majority of viewers no credit and they're Absolutely. appeasing I- a loud mob who were like, you know, like you'd almost have to come out wearing Man City jerseys and, and jump up and down for them to be happy. So like, who cares about them? Well, well the, th- the thing is, Joe, of course, like to, to have a BT uh, uh, subscription is a considerable uh, investment financially. Yeah. So you're presumably going to have a considerable interest in football. That's it. And I do, I do agree. You've got to treat the audience with a bit more respect than that. And um, you know, even blessed Richard Keys, uh, I'm told, ran through, uh, you know, a, a significant portion of what the charges mean and what it could mean, and, and the, the cloud hanging over. But John, sorry, I, I get, like so Richard Keys, you know, <laughs> many many failings. There's a journalistic instinct there. It's a journalist, yes. And a 100% on the biggest night of the season, 
with this massive cloud, if we're not addressing this, if we're not talking about this, we're just not doing our job. Like, what is the point of being here otherwise? And I, look, after the West Ham game, the party, absolutely. Should yeah. you bring it up uh, just after Jack Grealish has come over in tears? And, and, and is that the moment to bring it up? Probably not. Like, I, I, you got to be fair and understand there is a tone to set, but to just, like, whitewash the thing... I, I think I think another another criticism I would make is um, now we go back a year to Paris when you know something really nasty nearly happened. Yeah, it didn't. It was nasty enough. Um, BT acted as if nothing was happening there, and there was a point where I mean I know Jer was there for you, and you know obviously I have colleagues that were at the game and friends that were there as City fans. And there's a mounting problem of people having to go to this stadium. I was there in 2005, and I was looking at it and thinking, they haven't improved it since 2005. Mm. They haven't improved the logistics. And BT, again, oh, the City fans are a bit late. Why are they late? You know, uh, what, and um, oh, the city, the city bus is a bit late. Why is it late? Mm. Ask the question. Tell the, tell the story of what is going on. And, of course, again... I suppose if you're a host broadcaster, you've got a contract with the UEFA, you don't like to criticise the people that provide you with the, the deal. But you have to. Yeah, it does strike, because again, it's, the criticism they get is probably like OTT, like everything in football. It's just toxic. You know, any... Absolutely. A, any kind of interaction I have with football at Twitter, it's really grim. Um, so it's, it's, yeah. it's horrific. And I suspect somehow they've lost their confidence and they're trying to be as inoffensive to as many people mm. as possible. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, yeah, we say this and it relaunches in you know, yeah. a couple of months. We will see uh, that um, actually from talking to people involved there, it's all very opaque. They've shut down the office, uh, which used to be at the, the old... Um, Olympic Park, that, uh, where you would have, uh, I know you worked over here for the yeah. uh, Olympics, that's gone. They're back over to West London, where most TV production is done. And no one knows anything, it's as much as, as uh, from, from speaking to colleagues, um, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, dumbed down, cheapened, or whether they're going to have, where the presenters are going to be. It did look to me as though Rio Ferdinand fancies being a presenter rather than a pundit uh, in some of his interactions on there. That's just a, a hunch that I've got. Yeah. Okay. Get to Los but what well, I but the um, but it is, uh, yeah. We just don't know what to expect from them. This this new company and th there is a long way back from what we saw that night because it was a it was a disaster really for them. Yeah. And yeah, as a sign off, ouch. Mm. Yeah, uh, we are pretty much. It's, hey, listen, it's lucky we're so great, right? So well, I, yeah. I mean, listen, I'm I mean, of that. I, 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 Joe, I've written some absolute rubbish in my time, and I've spoken some absolute rubbish to you over the years. You know, this is this is how it's done, and you know, and nobody's perfect, of course. But there was a rather ill-starred thing, and uh, considering what had happened the previous year, and considering um, what it meant, and considering the issues that were there. They took their eye off the ball. It's a shame, and I'm f I'm sure there's a few wounds being lit there. And you know, uh, let's see what goes on next time with Manchester City in next year's Champions League final. Because I think they'll be there, don't you? Yeah, I would guess so. To be honest, John Bruin, always a pleasure. Thanks, Mill. Cheers, Joe.